unsuccessful seasons in the top flight, Steve has moved into the national... Kenny McKinnon will probably be the first Scotsman to buy a round of drinks if he wins the title today. He's one of the National League's top riders having a good season with the revitalised Glasgow Tigers. And Daz Sumner was Middlesbrough's big close season signing from Stoke, but he's found life difficult in a struggling Tigers side this season. Well that's the lineup. now let's join Steve Bendel and Edinburgh's promoter Doug Newlands for Heat One. Certainly should be a cracking meeting. There's a very, very good crowd here at Cowley this afternoon. The sunshine shining down. A lot of water has gone on the track, as obviously it must to try and allay uh, the dust problem. But uh, it really should be a fabulous meeting. This is the fourth of the Team Hill Grand Slam finals. And they're away then with Eaton Wallace, who gets the drop into the first course to him. Steve Bastable is not far away. And Mark Fiora looks to have made a good start, and he has. And it's Mark Fiora leading Steve Bastable. And perhaps the two less fancied riders, Doug, perhaps in the opening heat, getting away to a flyer. Yes, it's the problem with the opening uh, nerves in the first race. Maybe the gearing's not right. Uh, let's see how it turns out. Mark Fiora, anyway, is really setting sail at the moment. Steve Bastable. Steve Bastable now, currently he's in second place, but he's uh, not trying to make. Uh, headway here at the moment, Les Collins is in third, and Mark Laura, what a shock, he's at the back, and he's sure nobody thought that that was going to happen, but Mark Fiora really opening up a very healthy lead, Steve Bastable looks at the moment as if he's going to be able to keep Les Collins out of it, they're now onto their last lap, and it looks as if we've got a shock here in the opening heat, although saying a shock, it's 16 top riders of course, but Mark Laura was certainly one of the favourites, he's at the back at the moment, and Mark Fiora it is, who's going to pick up the three points for the opening heat. Second is Steve Bastable. In third is Les Collins and Mark Loram at the back. And certainly, Doug, that was a shock. A few shocks certainly there, yes. Uh, I think some of the boys before the meeting were a bit concerned they didn't have a chance to walk around the track and suss out how much dirt was on, what gears to pull. Uh, first ride, of course, it's not over by any means, but uh, there's nothing like getting a good first ride under your belt uh, to give you plenty of confidence for your next one. Uh, we must apologise, obviously, for the, uh, for the sun, which is causing us one or two problems. I hope it's not spoiling uh, your enjoyment. Oh, my goodness me, Martin Goodwin there, lifted very, very badly at the start. Jens Rasmussen's got away pretty well, and Steve Schofield has gone out, but Rasmussen manages to hold him, and Martin Goodwin's bike is on the track there as the race continues. Dr Jens Rasmussen leads it. Steve Schofield is in second, Milton, uh, Nigel Sparshot of Milton Keynes is third, and as you were saying there, Doug, Jens Rasmussen really using his track knowledge there, wasn't he? Yes, he is. He got a good start. Um, 
and he, he had a good first bend Schofield still in second place Schofield's not giving up no he certainly won't that's for sure and Nigel Sparshot seeing what he can do to uh, make an impression on Steve Schofield Martin Goodwin is out of it looked very badly at the start and uh, didn't like the look of that at all I uh, hope he's alright and I'm sure he is so James Rasmussen opening up a, a very very lengthy lead at the moment and it's very much the battle for second place with Steve Schofield in white managing to hold on from Nigel Sparshot at uh, the moment it looks very much as if that's the way they're going to finish James Rasmussen enjoyed that one he crosses the line for the three points in second is Steve Schofield from Poole he picks up two and in third was Nigel Sparshot from Milton Keynes he gets the third so an excellent start Doug for Jens Rasmussen yes uh, a good confidence boost on that one again Martin Goodwin suffering from uh, nerves he doesn't normally do that at the gate um, but of course it's a long way till heat 20 yeah it's a long long way to go but uh, an excellent start there for Jens Rasmussen from heat number two all line up then heat number three we've got Paul Woods from Rye House in red then Nigel Crabtree from Stoke in blue Ian Barney from Peterborough former National League Riders champion he's in white and Al Andy Galvin from Hackney is in yellow and black he's just coming back from uh, a very nasty smash that he had at Milton Keynes while guesting for Paul last week so uh, let's hope that he's uh, he's okay he's not fully fitted by his own admission let's see what happens as they come round the first turn and it's Ian Barney and it's Nigel Crabtree and Nigel Crabtree it is who's my tip in fact to win the meeting I'm sorry to burden him with that but uh, we shall see how he gets on with it Ian Barney is second Paul Woods is in third and Andy Galvin at the moment is at the back and Nigel Crabtree certainly looks to be means business Doug yes he made a very good gate off gate two which is quite a good gate so far tonight and there'll be very few people be able to pass him it's going to be difficult, I'm sure. He looks over his shoulder as Ian Barney looks to try and find a way round him. Ian, of course, who is uh, in a form at National League Riders' Champion, which is uh, some show of his mettle, one of the top-class riders in the league. Paul Woods of Rye House, he's in third at the moment. And Andy Galvin of Hackney, a bit of a surprise that he's at the back and perhaps feeling that injury. Yes, he might be. It's um, not just Hackney's day so far, is it? No, it certainly isn't with Mark Laura finishing last in his opening ride. So... Certainly Nigel Crabtree at the moment, but my goodness me, and Barney trying to wind it on around the outside, didn't quite make it, so it's a win for Nigel Crabtree. He picks up the three points. Two very hard-earned points there for Ian Barney. Paul Woods, he picks up the third-place point there in red. And as Doug was saying there, not a good start for the Hackney Riders with Andy Galvin finishing last. But Nigel Crabtree setting out his stall, one of the favourite <laughs> clichés there of the football commentator. He means business this afternoon. Perhaps as the, uh, as the dirt does move out a little bit later in the meeting, then we might see something a little bit different. But at the moment, certainly it is favouring the inside grids. Let's see if the two on the inside make the most of it. And uh, it looks very much as if Andy Buck has uh, got the drop here. He's coming off of gate two. And I'm afraid Kenny McKinna is going to disappoint a lot of people at the moment. He's uh, missed it completely. Daz Sumner of Millsborough, he's in second and battling hard and in third we've got Mel Taylor so uh, Andy Buck the Southern Riders champion he's uh, going very nicely Doug yes he is a bit um, hear him scare him out on the out on the track there at the moment um, Buck very unpredictable but uh, he wins a lot of races yes he does indeed he did of course was involved in that controversy when uh, he didn't uh, carry on in the meeting when Eastbourne were riding against Hackney he had mechanical problems and uh, he he decided to walk out of the meeting. He did apologise to the management, and uh, yeah, I'm sure everyone in Speedway is pleased to see him back in the saddle, and he's certainly going exceedingly well here. They're on the last lap. Daz Sumner of Middlesbrough, he's still in second. Mel Taylor's third. Kenny McKinnis still at the back. So a lot of disappointed Scotsmen, I'm afraid, Doug. Yes, can hardly hear the racing for the uh, all the Glasgow supporters. In fact, <laughs> <laughs> yes, so Kenny out of contention definitely in that one. <laughs> oh, yes, I'm afraid so. As they cross the line, it's a win for Andy Buck of Eastbourne. He picks up the three points. In second place was Daz. Sumner of Middlesbrough, good start for him. In third was Mel Taylor of Milden Hall. He gets the one point for third. And at the back there, as Doug was saying, Kenny McKinna. So uh, a poor start for him, but uh, a long, long way to go. But a good win there for the Southern Riders champion, Andy Buck, the only Eastbourne representative in the meeting. Mark, first out the gate and pretty good start for you. Yeah, I just hope it keeps up that way. You know, got a lot of races yet, but uh, I'll be out there trying. Bit of a surprise though, wasn't it? Mark Laram at the back there. Yeah, you know, that's the way it goes. Um, you know, when you, it's a pretty tough competition, I think. Today, most of the riders are pretty even, so I don't think it'll be nothing to get a, a first and then a last, you know. What about the track? Because it's a beautiful, hot summer's day here. Uh, as the time goes on, it's getting dustier. Do you think this is going to make things a bit awkward as time goes on? Well, I'm not sure. I, I don't think it's that bad. You know, the track itself looks uh, in pretty good shape, really. It may get a little bit dusty, but 
I don't think it'll be enough to worry anyone, you know. Think you're going to win today? <laughs> well, I don't know. I'll just keep on battling away and uh, hope I, you know, end up there somewhere. Let's see what happens in this one then. Here we go. Heat number five. Oh, look at that. What a marvellous action shot that is. Or a non-action shot, but it's action now as we get underway. And indeed, it looks as if Jens Rasmussen... Oh, no, no. He got carved up on the corner there. And Mel Taylor has got through. Rasmussen's now through into second. Ian Barney's in third. And Steve Bastable is at the back. And they're all uh, slicing each other up a little bit here. And Mel Taylor's got the drop. Yes, Mel got it. Uh, Rasmussen was trying to, to keep Barney out and, of course, let Mel in on the inside. Uh, it won't be easy to pass him now. No, he took full advantage indeed. Mel Taylor of Milton Hall leads it. Rasmussen trying hard on the inside there in second. In third at the moment is Ian Barney and Steve Bastable's at the back, but they're having a good old tussle. And Rasmussen has done it brilliantly. What a magnificent manoeuvre that was on the inside. But uh, Mel Taylor's not giving up, and Rasmussen looks as if he's done it. That was a class bit of riding. It was, yes. Uncom un uncompromising passing, you could call that. <laughs> it was hard, but very, very fair. Certainly no question of it. And Rasmussen is uh, looking in fabulous form at the moment. And uh, Mel Taylor is at, uh, in second. It could be very close for third, but a brilliant, brilliant bit of riding there by Jens Rasmussen, thoroughly deserving uh, his victory. Very, very hard. It's not easy to get past Mel Taylor, that's for sure, but uh, Jens Rasmussen found a way. So he's, uh, he gets picks up the two points, and we'll update you on third and fourth a little bit later on. But uh, an excellent second win, then, of the meeting for Rye House's Jens Rasmussen. Should he be in the league? Doug Newland says not, but here he is setting out his stall. We like that cliche. In the Team Hill Grand Slam final of 1988. And the starting marshal is uh, very particular. He's uh, not going to have Steve Schofield there hanging back. No, nope, he still doesn't like it. Come on up. Come on up. He says he's not going to let him go. Look at that. Look at that. Grim determination. His word is law. We're happy now. And Barry Richardson, the referee, to the taste of an Andy Bucket is, who looks to have made an excellent start. Steve Schofield has got a good one off the outside. And in fact, Steve Schofield it is, who's got round, right round the outside to uh, lead it. Andy Buck is in second. Mark Fiora is trying to make his challenge to get around Paul Woods. But uh, Steve Schofield got a flyer. Yes, he did. There was a bit of a ragged start. Steve just maximised uh, everything that was going leaving Fiora sort of lying in third place. But Fiora, as you can see, is still battling away. Yes, he is. He's giving it a real good go. Andy Bucks at the moment in second, and Paul Woods hasn't given this one up. He's in blue. He's in third at the moment, and uh, Mark Fiora is at the back. But Steve Schofield looks uh, barring a mistake, as if he's going to pick up three points here to add to the two he got first time at. Oh, my goodness me, Andy Buck is getting ever closer. There's not much in it as they're on the last lap, and if Steve Schofield doesn't look here, Andy Buck is going to be past him, and he's sticking to the inside. Steve's on the outside, and there is not much to choose between them, with uh, Paul Wood still in third at the moment as they come up to the line. What a terrific battle! Steve Schofield it is who just hangs on from Andy Buck, who chased him every inch of the way. A terrific effort. In third was Paul Woods and Mark Fiora, who was a winner, first time out. You know, but what a fabulous finish, though. It was. You've probably got the smallest guy and the biggest guy in Speedway just about there. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, um, Andy Buck's got terrific equipment, and Schofield's an out-and-out -out racer, and he just held the right line, and uh, there just wasn't quite enough for Andy to get past him. Melvin, that was a pretty exciting race out there between you and Yen. Yeah, I was uh, a bit disappointed, really. Uh, I started off with uh, a third like, and I had two races on the try, and I was, would have liked to have won that one, but all fairness to Re Yenzi, rode really well in a fair race, and that's what it's all about. Do you think it's going to be a difficult meeting? Because uh, there's been a few surprises so far with Mark Laram coming last. Yeah, sure. Um, meetings like this um, are bound to have a few surprises because everyone's more or less the same stamp like, so... So, yeah, there'll be a few more to come as yet, I think. How do you think the rest of it's going to go for you? You're getting things sorted out there in the pits. I see you're working very hard over your bike there. Yeah, we're just altering a couple of things. Hopefully, hopefully reel off another three wins, like, and get, get on the roster, if not win it, who knows. Look at that marvellous picture again. As Les Collins has a look down at Nigel Crabtree, it is. He looks as if he's shot out of the start there. But Kenny McKinna, Kenny McKinna, all oh, yeah, oh, the Glasgow fans, I think, have blown him round that first turn. He's going particularly well. He's now picked it up. He's in the lead. Nigel Crabtree is in second, and he's trying to get through on the inside. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Kenny McKinna's bike's packed. Oh, that's wretched luck. That is unlucky. Uh, Kenny's a, a very good rider, and luck is obviously not going to be on his side today. So that will disappoint all the Glasgow fans. Yes, indeed. More crying, wailing and gnashing of teeth. But Nigel Crabtree, he's giving the Stoke fans happy. He's in the lead there. Les Collins is in second at the moment. And Martin Goodwin is in third. But uh, Les has got a bit to do here. Yes, he's got a bit to do. He came from last and he's now got into second. So it keeps his hopes still going. 
Yes, uh, not his sort of track today, I'm afraid. No, maybe not. We're on the last lap now then. Nigel Crabtree it is, who's leading it. Les Collins is in second. Martin Goodwin is in third. And that looks very much as if that is the order they're going to finish as they come now around the final turn. Oh, my goodness me, he looked over his rock shoulder, Nigel Crabtree, but he just held on to get there. Les Collins picks up the two points in second. And it's a point there for Martin Goodwin of Arena Essex. He's breaking his duck. But uh, Nigel Crabtree there, I think, will be counting his blessings. Yes, he'll be feeling really happy now. He's got two wins. Uh, he's a super bloke, a uh, great racer. He held the right line. The track's fairly slick. But guys like Les Collins, you, you can't let up against them because they're, they're in there trying 100% all four laps. Here we go then with heat number eight. And all eyes, I'm sure, will be on the rider in red, Mark Loram, who very surprisingly failed to score in his opening ride. Then we've got Nigel Sparshot in blue. Andy Galvin of Hackney is in white. And Daz Sumner of Middlesbrough is in yellow and black. He's got two points to his credit so far. He's the leading rider, but Mark Laura looks to have made a much better start this time. As Daz Sumner tries to get around the outside, couldn't quite make it. In third is Nigel Sparshot. And this is a bit more like the Mark Lauren we were expecting. This is more like a good gate off the inside. He's really going for it, although he's being closely chased by Sumner. Let's see what happens. Yes, Sumner's not going to give him an inch, that's for sure. A good battle as well going on for third there with Andy Galvin. Just getting through into third past Nigel Sparshot. So uh, action all the way and a lot more overtaking now beginning to creep in as maybe the dirt has moved out a little bit. And uh, we're, uh, we're certainly now beginning to see some overtaking, which is good stuff indeed. But uh, the battle up front. Oh, dear, oh, dear. That's Daz Sumner. Bad luck for him. So Mark Loram is left well, well clear here. Uh, Andy Galvin is in second. And Nigel Sparshot's in third. They're on the last lap. So that's how they look. They're going to finish. Uh, oh, it's a good battle still for second. My goodness me, and Andy Galvin is just about hanging on as Mark Loram comes around the turn. He was a wheelie in celebration, three points to him. It's two for his uh, teammate, Andy Galvin, of course. They're not, uh, not riding together today, though, that's for sure. And in third there in blue was Nigel Sparshot and Daz Sumner there suffering uh, great bad luck. Yes, it was unlucky there because he was really uh, in with a good chance there, although once Loram's away, a uh, few will manage to, to stop and he'll be feeling a lot happier after a good win there. He will. So he failed to score then on his first outing. Bounces back there in fine style. Three points to him in heat number eight. Well, Mark, you won that uh, championship down at Eastbourne on a 15-point maximum. Perhaps you can tell us about it. How did it go? Uh, it was good, really. You know, everything suited me. The track was done good. You know, it suited, suited me good. And um, I just got my clutch problem sorted out, and I was making really good starts. And um, I, I made good starts in every race, bar one. But, you know, I wasn't too far behind, so I could get through. It's been great, though, being ahead there of Martin Dugard, who's in the British League, of course. Well, that's right. I mean, I honestly couldn't see myself beating Martin because, he's, I mean, he's been flying this year. And, he's, I mean, there ain't many people to beat him around Arlington. So I was, I was kind of surprised and pleased, you know. But I went into the meeting confident. I'd done my best and I was quite lucky. My best was good enough. Now, that put you really in sort of a favourite for this meeting. And the Mark Loran we just saw out there was the one we all know. But what happened in your first race? The oil pump broke down on my bike and I brought it in and like I hadn't used uh, a drop of oil. So no oil was getting through to the engine, so therefore it was tightening up. It just weren't going anywhere. So we've put another oil pump on now for spare bike. I can only hope it'll be better. It seemed right in that one. Looking down again. Oh, was that a bit of tape touching that we saw there? What's Barry Richardson think of that one? We shall have to wait and see. Oh, yes, well, the tapes have gone up and obviously... Uh, I would think uh, you saw it there for yourselves. It looked very much indeed as if uh, Steve Bassel, I think, Doug, wasn't it? Yes, I think it looked, rather looked as if his clutch was dragging him into the tapes a bit and the referee was holding them until they were still, which, of course, they weren't. So, um, touch tape. Here we go, then, the rerun of heat number nine. We've got Steve Schofield of Poole on the inside in red. Next to him is Daz Sumner in blue. The reserve, the meeting reserve, is Spencer Timo in white and Nigel Crabtree of yellow and, in yellow and black is on the outside, and Steve Schofield it is, as uh, Doug was tipping, you may well remember, who uh, has gone out in front. Uh, Nigel Crabtree has now battled his way through into second, and Daz Summers in third. It's Steve Schofield who's going to put himself... Oh, he's looking down at his bike, and has he got trouble? He has! His hand goes up there. Oh, dear, oh, dear, what wretched luck there for the pool rider. And Nigel Crabtree, this is the second time he's been... I've got a feeling it might be his afternoon. Yes, I think he's going his way at the moment. <laughs> it certainly is the second time he's been able to take advantage. He picks up three more points there in heat number nine, and you begin to think that maybe... His name is going to be on the trophy. Das Sumner of Middlesbrough. He finishes there for two points in second place. And I'm don't, not sure whether Steve Schofield managed to limp around. We think he did, in fact. He limped around there to pick up the third place point. 
in red. But, oh, what tragic luck that was. But uh, Nigel Crabtree is uh, certainly benefiting well. And uh, if you believe in fate, then uh, maybe you've just seen the winner of the Grand Slam 1988. Nigel, what do you call that luck you're having out there, coming from the back every time? It's not really luck, is it? Um, all right. Yeah, I've come. I've been second twice and somebody stopped in front of me. The name of the game is to race for four laps. If the bikes don't keep going, well, it's one of them things. Last night at Stoke, I broke down three times. Um, it evens itself out over the year. It's just the way it goes. Now, in 1986, you were third. In 1987, you were second. Does that mean in 1988, you're going to be the number one? I don't know. Um, if somebody had said that to me well, before the meeting, anyway, I certainly wouldn't have said so, because I haven't been going good enough this year to deserve winning this meeting. But as I just said, it's on the day and it's the look, you know, so we have to see how it goes. Well, I shall have to own up. In fact, it was myself who said that to Nigel before the meeting started. Yes, third and second. Maybe this is going to be his year. I did predict it. My goodness me, could I be right? The full line of heat number 10. We've got Andy Galvin of Hackney in red. Jens Rasmussen of Rye has unbeaten in blue. So let's see how he gets on here as he goes around the turn. And then I'll give you the rest of the lineup. And it looks very much as if he's done it again. Or has he? No, because Andy Galvin has held him out brilliantly. Kenny McKinna of Glasgow is in white. Mark Fiora's in yellow and black. And Andy Galvin of Hackney's leading Jens Rasmussen. Kenny McKinna is there in third. Mark Fiora is at the back, and Jens Rasmussen's got his work cut out here, Doug. Yeah, it's funny, I was going to say, I had a hunch Galvin was going to do something in this one. He's not looking terribly comfortable up till now, but he's certainly looking quite easy as he rides there. I'm sure, in fact, he's probably still feeling the uh, the back injuries that he suffered up at Milton Keynes uh, just a week ago, and uh, it's not that easy, is it, riding the speedway bike? No, no, you, you, you've got to feel completely fit and confident in yourself uh, in this sort of company, but uh, Galvin's looking very much better in this one. Yes, he is. He said he was feeling very stiff and sore before the meeting, but he's going well here. He's on the last lap now, Andy Galvin leading it. Jens Rasmussen is in second. Kenny McKinnon's in third, trying to break his duck. And Mark Fiora, who started with a win, looks as if he's now had a couple of last. He messed at the final turn there. It is, in fact, a win then in red for Andy Galvin. He picks up the three points. In two was, uh, second, I beg your pardon, was uh, Jens Rasmussen in blue from Rye House. And third in white was uh, Kenny McKinna. So there we are then, Jens Rasmussen. He now reaches the interval on eight points, and he's obviously one of the major contenders. Yep. So here we go with the secondary run of heat number 11. Two makes the start, and Andy Buck looks to have made a good one. Ian Barney, though, is trying to stay on the white line, but Andy Buck it is who's got round him. In third is Les Collins, and uh, Andy Buck could do himself a lot of good here. Yes, another good, uh, valuable three points for him, but um, Barney is right on his tail, as you can see. Yes, he is, if Andy Buck makes a mistake, he's right on his exhaust pipe right there, isn't he? Back across the bike, oh, he's trying to... Trying to get around the... Thought he was going to come back on the inside and didn't. He fooled me. Anyway, I don't know whether he fooled Andy Buck. But uh, Andy's keeping out wide. Ian Barney lifting there, as you can see, trying to get every ounce of grip he can out of the track. And uh, Les Collins, obviously disappointing for you, Doug, is uh, in third. It is disappointing. He didn't get a very good start. But Barney's in there still trying everything he knows. And uh, he's a very good rider on the inside, especially if there's no inside edge and a lot of grass. He's got one lap to go then, see what he can do. Andy Buck is uh, holding fairly mid-track now, trying to pull back on the inside. Oh, my goodness me, you can see the work Ian Barney's putting in to try and find a way through, round past anything to try and edge his way in front. It's going to be very, very close, and Les Collins come into the picture there, but it is a win for Andy Buck. He picks up the three points. In second was Ian Barney, he picks up two, and in third was Les Collins with one. So Andy Buck, he'll enjoy his cup of tea because he's now got to the interval with eight points, putting himself right in the reckoning. Heat number 12 sees four riders very much in need of points. We've got Mel Taylor in red on the inside. He's on three. Mark Loram is in blue. He's on three points. Paul Woods from Rye House. He's on two points. He's in white. And Martin Goodwin of Arena Essex in yellow and black. He's on one. And really, I think uh, whoever doesn't win this uh, can really kiss goodbye to their chances. Yes, I think. Uh, I'll go for blue in this one, though his bike sounds as if it's missing. Right. Well, there we are, Doug. Uh, Picked that up as they were going round to the start line. He didn't think that uh, Mark Loram's bike sounded too healthy. And Mel Taylor it is who's made the start. Mark Loram is in second at the moment, trying to find uh, a way past. In third, we've got Paul Woods and Martin Goodwin is at the back. And uh, Mel Taylor, difficult man to get past, but um, we have one rider who managed it. Yes, uh, he's riding the right line though, and uh, I'm quite sure Loram's bike's not going as well as it should be. Now, I must admit, it doesn't seem to be that high power, but as you can see, getting uh, Mel Taylor's supporter there urging him on. He's got more than one, of course, but one we picked out there. Getting very vociferous there, encouraging him. And certainly, he's doing uh, very well indeed at the moment as they come to start their last lap, but Mark Loram hasn't given it up, but it doesn't look as if he's going to find a way past. 
No, he's certainly not giving up. He's trying the outside run to see if he can find some extra drive out there, but uh, I think he's got a job on his hands. He's coming around the final turn, then he's doing what he can to try and uh, find a way, but he can't do it. And Mel Taylor, it is, who picks up three points. Yeah, there we are, the air horn guy. Oh, highly delighted with that one. Look at that, Ethel. He did it. Ah, oh, terrific stuff. The air horn goes again. Good stuff indeed. Three points then for Mel Taylor. Two for Mark Loram, one for Paul Woods, and Martin Goodwin was at the back. Heat 13 then, the first race after the interval, sees Martin Goodwin in red, Andy Galvin in blue, Andy Bucks in white, and Steve Bastables in yellow and black. And as they get round the first turn, it looks very much as if Andy Buck, who got to the interval on eight points, has uh, really got the bit between his teeth here. Yes, Galvin took him right out there, but uh, Andy Buck, there was enough space, and he just carried on and got round, and uh, he's leading those with the leaders of the pack and this could be another three points to add to his total. Looks very much as if either Nigel Crabtree, Jens Rasmussen or Andy Buck are going to lift the title and Andy Buck is certainly making the most of his first ride after the interval. In second at the moment is Martin Goodwin, who's uh, not had the happiest of meetings so far. Andy Galvin's in third and Steve Bastable is at the back. That's the way they stand. Martin Goodwin, just to remind you, actually won the inaugural Grand Slam in 1985, but he's not going to win tonight, so I'm afraid to say, for uh, you Arena Essex fans. They're on the last lap now, though. One man who might is Andy Buck, the only Eastbourne representative, and he's winning it by a clear distance, Doug. Yes, he's got no troubles now in this one, and he's going to take the chequered flag and three points. He does indeed. Three points then to Andy Buck. In second was Martin Goodwin, a much better uh, performance from him there. In third was Andy Galvin, and at the back was Steve Bastable. But Andy Buck moves on to 11 points. Heat number 14 sees the only unbeaten rider in the meeting so far, Nigel Crabtree of Stoke. He's in yellow and black. Let's just see them around the first turn, and he's made a right mess on it, I think it's fair to say. And we've got a full line of Mark Fiore in red, Mel Taylor in blue, and they're all getting very, very close indeed. And Nigel Crabtree has got through into second place. Nigel Sparshall's in white. It all got a bit hairy. It's all a bit hairy. Uh, Crabtree didn't get a particularly good gate. He tried to hang back and cut in on the inside. And and then there was problems with Mel Taylor getting in people's way in. Not all very venty. And Nigel Sparshot's machine has given up the ghost there, I'm afraid. He's out of it as Mark Fiora leads it then. Mark, who's had a very up and down meeting. He won his opening ride, then came last in his next two, but he's leading this one. And Nigel Crabtree is in second. And Andy Buck will be pleased if it stays this way at the moment. But Nigel Crabtree now trying to get through on the inside. Oh, terrific stuff. As he locks it back, can he do it? Oh, Grace of Fiora's on the outside. Nigel Crabtree's on the inside. Who's going to make it the final run into the line? Terrific stuff indeed, but it's going to be won there by Mark Fiora, but they got very close, Doug. Uh, very, very close. Uh, <laughs> not a lot of dirt there, not a lot of lines to, to go around. Crabby was trying everything, but Felix rode a very, very good race to, to hold him off for the three points. It, number 15 sees a line-up in red, Daz Sumner of Middlesbrough. He's on four points. Next to him in blue is Les Collins of Edinburgh. He's on four. In white, Paul Woods of Rye House has three. And in yellow and black, Jens Rasmussen of Rye House. He's on eight, so he looks to be the man to look for. My co-commentator, Doug Newlands, the Edinburgh promoter, strictly neutral in this one as they come round the turn and Daz Sumner looks to have made a good start and Jens Rasmussen tries to fly around the outside. Terrific bit of work again there and Rasmussen's through and he really is looking class. Yes he is, gate one has only has won twice as many races as gate four but uh, Rasmussen's found the drive and he's got good equipment that he's sitting on and uh, holding quite a good lead now in front of Daz Sumner. To be fair he didn't really get out of the gate that fast no, did he? No it wasn't that great a gate and uh, in fact nobody seemed to make a very good gate actually except no. gate one. <laughs> no but uh, certainly Rasmussen is now making the best of his way home. Daz Sumner is in second but look at the lead there only one man in the camera shot he's that far in front. Quite a battle going on between uh, Paul Woods and Les Collins for that third place but uh, Rasmussen here is opened up a terrific lead. That's going to, believe it or not, put him on 11 points if he wins it. And would you believe the three men on 11 points win in Heat 20? Or <laughs> meet in Heat 20, I should say. It is a win there then for Jens Rasmussen. He picks up the three points in second was uh, Daz Sumner in red. Did you pick up the third there? No, Don't I missed third. No, I we'll, uh, we'll check on the third there for you then for, uh, for when we come back. But certainly no doubt about the winner. That was Jens Rasmussen in yellow and black. Well, in fact, it was Paul Woods who picked up the third place point in heat number 15. We're on to heat number 16. Ian Barney in red, Steve Schofield in blue, Mark Loram in white, Kenny McKinner in yellow and black. The tapes rise. Let's see who makes the first turn, Ian Barney. 
It is who moves out fairly wide though, leaving Steve Scover just a, a little bit of a chance, but no, he, he wasn't able to get through there. Kenny McKinnon's in third, but um, Ian Barney looks to be uh, well set in this one, Doug. Yes, it was a nice even start. My, my tip was for inside. I think Barney's racing very well. He's trying to find the grip. He certainly found some there. <laughs> he did indeed. He moved about a bit too much, well, I maybe think. It found him. <laughs> about a little bit too much as he drifted out a bit wide, but he's managed to bring it back under control. Steve Schofield is in second. He's been challenged hard by Kenny McKinnon, who's in third, and uh, Mark Loram's at the back, and it's not really been a happy uh, event for him. No, it's been very up and down. He's had a win a second and a last, and this looks like being another one for him. Yes, it does. Having said that, of course, they're on the last lap now that um, he won the uh, British Under-21 Championship at Eastbourne on Sunday, so he's, he's having a good year, isn't oh, he? Oh, he's having a good year, and he, he won't let this get him down too much. I'm no, sure. I'm sure he won't. Uh, he's on his side. It is indeed, as we cross the line in heat number 16, it is a win for Ian Barney. Second in blue there was Steve Schofield, and third in yellow and black, that'll please the Glasgow supporters. That was Kenny McKinnon. So Mark Lauren finishes at the back. It's certainly not going to be his meeting, and uh, to be honest, I don't think even the winner of that one, Ian Barney, will figure in the final placings. So three riders then have carved it out between them. Jens Rasmussen, Andy Buck and Nigel Crabtree. They're all on 11. A three-point gap then to the next one. We're into heat number 17. And to be fair, none of these riders are going to alter the places. We've got Steve Bastable in red, Nigel Sparshot in blue, Kenny McKinner in white, and Paul Woods in yellow and black. And Steve Bastable is making the best of his way home. Yes, it was a hard one to pick who was going to win it, because really, as you say, Steve, none of them have got a chance. But it's very close in this one. Yes, very competitive because obviously a lot of pride is at stake and they are uh, picking up points money as well. So nobody's going to want to finish at the back and Steve Bastable's going very nicely indeed at the moment. Kenny McKinnon, all those coach loads of fans we keep mentioning, they're sp inspiring him no doubt. He's second, Nigel Sparshot's third and Paul Woods is at the back at the moment. But uh, still at the moment, Steve Bastable looks to have a fairly good line. Well, he's changed his bike. He's on a different, um, he's on a different bike this time. I think he's changed from Wesley back to GM to find a bit more drive. Seems to be working for him so far. Seems to be working. Sure. He's certainly coming off the best gate tonight. Yes, the inside gates are doing pretty well. Kenny McKinnon still trying to have a go at him, but I don't think he's managed to get, get there. Steve Bastable it is who wins. Kenny McKinnon is second. And as they went through in third, we reckon that was probably Nigel Sparshot whizzing over the line there for third. Not to worry, anyway, there we go. Steve Bastable wins heat number 17. Here they come then in the first turn, and Doug reads it pretty well. You're not an Edinburgh, you don't get to be an Edinburgh promoter without reading these starts, <laughs> I'll tell you. And Ian Barney it is who leads. Martin Goodwin, he's in the thick of the action there in his checkered leathers. He's in the white helmet colour. And there you see Daz Sumner. He's at the back at the moment with Mark Fiora in third. A change of scenery, he's been either first or last up to now. But Ian Barney, it is, a former National League Riders Champion and indeed one of the top riders in the league. Oh yes, a great racer, he's going very well this year. And uh, the conditions are suiting him well now, he's getting all the drive that's going out of his engine and Goodwin's not making up any ground on him now. No indeed, if uh, anything, I think Ian Barney's beginning to edge even further ahead. Martin Goodwin is in second, Mark Fiora's third. Daz Summers at the back as they're on the last lap now. And look at that, it's an all-action style from Ian Barney. And he's going to pick up three very valuable points here to move him on to 11. Could be a rostrum placing, we'll see. He gets the three points anyway. Very, very close indeed for second. I think perhaps Martin Goodwin just edged in. I'm going to give him second, I think. And in third there was Mark Fiora in blue. That's the result then of heat number 18. Here we go then, the final heat of the T-Mill Grand Slam final, 1988. It couldn't be better poised. We've got Jens Rasmussen from Rye House in red. He's on 11 points. Next to him in blue is Andy Buck from Eastbourne. He's on 11 points. Next to him in white is Nigel Crabtree from Stoke. He's on 11 points. And on the outside in yellow and black, the nigger in the woodpile. That's Mark Lauren from Hackney. He's on six points. So it's all set, Doug. It's all set. It's anybody's race. Rasmussen's got the advantage on the inside. But uh, if Buck makes a good gate, anything could happen. And let's not forget Crabby on gate three. Now, he's got the added burden of uh, my tip to be the winner. But it's the inside gate who've come over very strong at last. Definitely. Twice as much as all the other gates. There we are then. So uh, it, everything looks to favour Jens Rasmussen here in, uh, in red. But uh, we shall see. Four laps to go then to decide the winner of the Grand Slam 1988. And don't forget, of course, it's £500 for the winner. 250 for the second, 100 for the third. Let's see who makes it. And Jen Tresmus again. Oh, my goodness me. Well, there we have Andy Buck down on the track. We've got Mark Loram down on the track. They all got very close. Yes, um, 
I don't know, I saw the water cart just going out, putting water down. There wasn't just enough room for Buck. He locked up, came down, and Loram uh, laid down just behind him. Here we go, it's, uh, it was all four back in the rerun. First Ben bunching it was. So let's see what happens now, and it looks to almost to be a carbon copy with Jens Rasmussen and Andy Buck making it. Nigel Sparshot trying to get through on the inside of Andy Buck, and he has, but I think Jens Rasmussen's away. Yes, he seems to go away. Crabtree's trying everything he knows, and he certainly won't give up, but surprisingly, perhaps in third place, still anybody's race. It certainly is. Jens Rasmussen leads it, then Andy Buck has now gone through into second. Nigel Crabtree is now in third, and those two have a real dice. Oh, my goodness me, are they touched there? They did seem to touch. Nasty one. I think Nigel Crabtree uh, did, in fact, there make contact with Andy Buck. I, th I think that's the way it happened. I think though. he just tried too hard, and there wasn't enough grip on the track to hold him up. Uh, Buck had nowhere to go and just went. Could be a nasty one for Buck. The bike went in straight on top of him. Oh, well, let's hope that uh, this what promised to be uh, a terrific heat number 20. Nigel Crabtree, he's down on the track there as well. Let's hope that it's not ruined by those riders not being able uh, to take part. We'll have to see what the, the referee's decision is. You obviously have got your view of it, but the only one that counts is that of Barry Richardson's. And the referee's decision was that no rider was at fault. If all riders were able to take part in the rerun, they could. Andy Buck, I'm afraid, can't. He look, the initial diagnosis is cracked ribs and a foot injury as Jens Rasmussen and Nigel Crabtree has got onto the outside, but Jens Rasmussen comes back on the inside. Nigel Crabtree battling it out. He was he was able to take part again, but Jens Rasmussen leads it, and it's sort of, it's how really, isn't it? Yes, as you were. Rasmussen was keeping Loram out. Uh, Crabtree came under him, and then he went out, and Rasmussen's back under him again, and Rasmussen's holding the lead. And I think, in fairness, uh, Jens Rasmussen has been uh, leading on, on both the stoppages. I don't think anyone could really argue that he doesn't deserve to be there. No, no, Rasmussen is going well. Crab Crabtree certainly the luckiest rider on show today. Uh, is his luck going to run out, or will he manage to snatch something out the last lap? He's going to give it all he can over the last lap, that's for sure. But Jens Rasmussen looks as if he is just one lap away. Jens Rasmussen leading. Nigel Crabtree is in second. He's got to give it all he can coming round the final turn. I don't think he's going to be able to do it, or can he, as he tries to get a grip, he can't. Jens Rasmussen wins it in red. Nigel Crabtree is second, and Jens, look at that, he punches the air. He is highly delighted with it all, and I think a deserved winner, Doug. Yes, he is. I, mean, it's, uh, I suppose winning a meeting like this is a great way of putting two fingers up to the authorities that tried to keep him out of the game, uh, or certainly in National League racing, but he's certainly deserved his win. Uh, he's had a good afternoon, and I'm sure no one will deny him, deny him it. Now, well, Jens, uh, there was a bit of a worrying moment there, but eventually you did it. Yeah, I mean, I was, was getting a bit tense uh, last season. We had a couple of goals before we actually got going, and uh, I'm very pleased I came out there uh, on top. I understand it was closer than you thought, because when you got back in the pits, there was something wrong with your bike, wasn't there? Yeah, I, I realised on the couple, uh, last few laps the bike was missing, and... Uh, I saw the lead on the magic box was actually broken off, so I Did think the lead was with me today. Well done and congratulations on the, being the champion. Oh, thank you. Jens Rasmussen, the 1988 Grand Slam.